After the conclusion of Code Geass R2, fans were still left with many questions. How did Nunley survive the Flea? And while we're on the subject on Nunley, how did she break her father's Geass? Learn about Lucia's plans from hand contact? And how did she know that Suzaku was touching her hand when they reunited seven years ago? And for other questions, where did Geass come from? What is C2's real name? Where did V2 get his Geass from? How did Lelouch tell C's world not to stop time? And what was the purpose of Shinke's illness if he never dies? But I think we can all agree, the most important unanswered question is, between Shirley, Colin, and C2, who did Lelouch romantically love the most? Many people use the idea that Shirley loved Lelouch Lamperouge, Colin loved Zero, and C2 loved Lelouch V Britannia. I actually did not subscribe to this idea and have proven the case for Colin, links in the description below. The purpose of this video is to examine the arguments for and against Lelouch loving each of the three main women. After my analysis, I will determine who I think Lelouch loved the most. Some disclaimers before I begin. I'm not including Yuffie because there's not enough to talk about, and Lelouch said she might have been the first girl he loved, so I don't think he felt that way about her. I won't talk about Kaguya either because of all the possible romantic relationships in this story, this one is one-sided that even Kaguya thinks Colin and C2 for keeping Zero company. She even went as far to suggest that Zero has needs and these women can take on those needs. Plus, Lucia's has never shown any romantic interest in Kaguya. I love when he rejects her by stating he already made a deal with the devil. Also, there will be heavy spoilers, and this is the most important. This is just my opinion on how I interpret the plot. So if my opinion is different from yours, that does not mean your ship has no validity. And I personally ship Colin and Lelouch and C2 with Lelouch. But for this video, I try to keep my biases out and just look at what the series gives us. Also, this analysis will come from R1 and R2 because in the alternative universe, they make it pretty clear who Lelouch loves the most. Not all tasks have been cleared, let's begin. We will first start with Shirley and if Lelouch loved her or not by going through first the arguments for. We know that Lelouch cared for her and he demonstrated this when he erased her memories. He did this because he was following the advice of C2 to keep those you care about at a distance. After he does this, Lelouch shares a conversation with Shirley where they talk about the fact that he might have loved Shirley at one point, but right now only acknowledges that losing her in his life was a real blow. He never realized what he had until it was gone. It reminds me of Al Pacino's inches speech from Any Given Sunday where he said, you know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. That's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. And I think Lelouch experienced that phenomenon in that scene. Lelouch's reaction in both times when Shirley is affected by Gias could be a sign that he loves her. The two I'm referring to is when Mao read her mind and when Rollo killed her. In both cases, Lelouch became enraged and blamed Gias. And the only other time we see this level of emotion is when something bad happens to Nunnally. This could be proof of his love since Lelouch would not act that way if he did not have feelings for her. Heck, even his outpour of tears when she died really demonstrated that he might have had seen her more as a friend and he could have had real feelings for her. However, when looking through the plot, there aren't many other examples beyond what I've mentioned where Lelouch shows he might have interest in Shirley, which is why we're going to now go to the cons, and one of the cons is kind of related to this point. Let's start with the scene in R2 where Shirley panics and jumps off the roof of the building that Lelouch and Saku were on. Keep in mind, this is right after she got her memories back. Lelouch grabs onto her arm, and Suzaku grabs his leg. Lelouch convinces Shirley to let him help her by saying he cannot lose anyone else that was close to him. And what always bugged me was if Lelouch really loved Shirley, this was the best time to tell her because she could have died and this could have been the last time they'd ever speak to each other. And it would have been natural for him if he really believed that, but he didn't say that and that never happened. And based on his actions and how he treats Shirley in the series, this makes sense. Not only even commented on it by saying that Lelouch has been acting very cold to Shirley. And here, here's the problem. Shirley is not a priority in Lelouch's life. Every time Shirley wants to talk to Lelouch, he ignores her. Shirley only matters to Lelouch if she's in danger or could further his plans. He demonstrates this when she was attacked by Mao, and he used her when he went with her to buy Valletta a gift, and the whole plan was to trap Rollo. One of the biggest offenders of this problem is how Shirley kissed Sayako as Lelouch. When Lelouch finds out, it's played out for laugh, 
The whole episode itself is filler. You would think if Saiko kissed Shirley as Lelouch, that would actually play out into a bigger thing, but it didn't, doesn't really go anywhere. There's like one scene where Saiko as Lelouch talks to Shirley, and it was kind of deep, but it wasn't even Lelouch in that part. It gets played off at the end when they're shown as a couple, when in fact it's a fabrication, and that's not even Lelouch over there. Valletta even tells Lelouch that Shirley loves him, but he just doesn't care. Showing interest when it's convenient does not demonstrate real love for someone. And that's what I was referring to earlier when I said there's not many situations where Lelouch actually shows interest in Shirley, because in general, he's never really with Shirley. He avoids her all the time because she's not relevant in his plans. He always rejects her, and that's why I don't think he really liked her. I think they were friends and nothing more. They might have been closer if Lelouch didn't start his plans to destroy Britannia, but since he did, Lelouch only cared about her when her life was in danger or when it benefited his plans, and that's not what real love is. Let's move on to the Ace of the Black Knights and the captain of the Zero Squad, Colin Kozaki. The best place to start is the famous scene in R2 turn 19. After Lelouch and Colin get out of the elevator, Colin tries to comfort Lelouch on his loss. Before the conversation goes anywhere, the Black Knights turn on Zero. Colin defends Lelouch and then asks him, I need an answer, Lelouch. What do I mean to you? I have to know. If I can stay with you, I would. Please. Lelouch doubles down the Black Knight's claim, even going as far to call Colin his greatest pawn. Colin gets really emotional and walks away. When Colin walks away, he whispers to her that she needs to live. According to the poem that Colin wrote, Colin actually thought that Lelouch did this because he knew that if Colin went with her, she would sacrifice everything for him, so it was a way to let her live. I don't know if that means Lelouch loved Colin, but it does prove he cares a lot about her. However, it's important to realize that this is from Colin's perspective, and Lelouch never actually confirms this. But since it was made by the creators of the story, you can kind of infer that it means that Lelouch didn't want Colin to follow him because he wanted her to live. Now, another thing that Lelouch does that might show some kind of interest in Colin is that he teases her throughout the series. You could interpret this as flirting. I do not completely see the teasing as mean-spirited, as Lelouch does put his jacket on Colin in turn two after teasing her. But if you do think it was mean-spirited, that could make sense as well. There are many moments that Colin and Lelouch share which might imply mutual romantic interest. In turn 9, Colin falls on Lelouch when she was daydreaming, and Lelouch tells her that when this is over, he should come with him to Ashford Academy. Before Lelouch could explain, C2 interrupts the conversation. We'll never know exactly what Lelouch meant by this. After Colin kisses Lelouch in turn 22, she realized that he did not share her feelings, so Colin tells Lelouch goodbye. Lelouch quietly mumbles goodbye to Colin. His demeanor can be compared to someone's reaction to a breakup, which means that he actually did love Colin, but he couldn't be with her because he had to be the evil Emperor Lelouch. I like how Lelouch only talks to Colin about leaving the Black Knights. This is very important because he really cares about her and if she doesn't want her to do this, it's okay if she leaves, even though if she leaves, Lelouch is probably screwed, as well as the rest of the Black Knights. So we have some hints of a possible romantic interest from Lelouch but nothing concrete. Let's move on to the arguments that Lelouch did not have feelings for Colin. I want to first start with turn 7, where Lelouch tried to force himself on Colin. People wrongly use it as proof that Lelouch was interested in Colin, but here's why it doesn't work. Lelouch never refers to Colin as his girlfriend. Instead, he just says there are things that a woman can do for someone. It's so vague and generic, it could refer to anyone. He doesn't even call her by her name. He does not even compliment her body, which again shows that it could have been any woman and Colin just happened to be there. If Colin had just left Lelouch alone, he probably would have never asked her to console him to begin with. And how is forcing yourself on someone a sign of love or romantic interest? It's also important to point out that Lelouch never brings this up again with Colin. If Lelouch was declaring his feelings for Colin in that scene, then there should have been some kind of follow-up, but again, it never happens. It just seems to me that Lelouch saw Colin as his ace pilot and never cared for her as a person. For example, he never asks Colin or talks to her about her mother or brother. And this doesn't make any sense because he learns about her mother being addicted to refrain early on in the series. But the way Lelouch handled Colin's rescue is what convinced me that he was not in love with Colin. Lelouch declared he would rescue Colin in turn 10, 
but he never states when. There's even a part where he tells C2 that he needs to do something else first. Lelouch abandoned the Black Knights to save Nunnally, even though it was a huge mistake and cost them the battle and almost the war. So if Colin was that important to him, he would have immediately gone to rescue her. She just wasn't a priority. Even in the mission to rescue Nunnally in turn 18, Colin was labeled as priority 3. If Nunnally was not even in the Bureau, I wonder how much longer Lelouch would have taken to save Colin. Here are some other important things to keep in mind. Colin was not important enough to mention when Lelouch was stating the objectives during that battle. None of the Black Knights, either than Psycho, even mentioned rescuing Colin at all. Lelouch never asked for updates on the progress to save Colin during the whole operation. After the flail was launched, Lelouch never asked about Colin. He only asked about Nunnally. If Colin really mattered to him, don't you think he would have contacted her? on some level. Lelouch does apologize for not rescuing Colin sooner, but that doesn't prove any romantic feelings for Colin. Something else really bothers me. When Lelouch and Colin talk about Gias in turn two, Lelouch lied that he never used his Gias on her when he did. He should have told her the truth. In the end, Lelouch never opened up to her, aside from a few instances, and never showed any romantic interest for her. This might have been excusable in R1 when Colin didn't know his identity, but once they both knew each other's identity, there's no reason why Lelouch could not have opened up to her. Despite Colin even falling in love with the real Lelouch and kissing him, he still didn't show any mutual interest. So Lelouch respected Colin as a friend ally and his most powerful piece to deploy in the battlefield. But there's not much evidence beyond that that he ever saw her as a love interest, just a good friend. Let's move on to the last possible love interest, the mysterious C2, and the last of the three women to go over. There are numerous examples that prove that Lelouch had possible romantic feelings for C2, and I thought it would be a good idea to start with the best one. In turn 24, C2 was talking to Lelouch about if she ruined his life by giving him Gias. Lelouch, instead of blaming her, thanks her for the Gias. C2 then says that all my life I have never met a man quite like you. Lelouch starts to approach her and says C2. Given the tone and how Lelouch was moving towards her, if Colin had not interfered, then these two would have hugged and possibly kissed. Compared this to Shirley or Colin, we have never seen Lelouch ever approach either one of them in this manner. I mentioned that Lelouch teased Colin throughout Kogias, and well, he does the same with C2. With C2, it was more playful. You can infer this from the expression that both C2 and Lelouch make after the insults. It's very reminiscent of playful flirting. The teasing is not one-sided, as C2 gives Lelouch as much as he gives it to her. I mentioned already that Lelouch does not open up to Colin or Shirley much in Kogias. Lelouch has shared his plans, concerns, insecurities, and setbacks to C2. They have had so many debates on life, and C2 is the only one who gives Lelouch the feedback that he really needs. She gets him on track and keeps him going. Colin was just a follower in Lelouch's eyes, and surely a good friend, but neither could fill this need for him. With C2, Lelouch had found someone who's an actual partner. They both help each other out and fulfill each other's needs. Every time Lelouch needs comfort or advice, C2 is the one he goes to. My favorite example being he went to her after what happened to Yuffie in the specially administrative zone of Japan. Lelouch also cares a lot about C2, and it's adorable that even though he knows C2 can die, he still tells her to be safe on many missions. I can't remember one time where he tells Colin to be safe before going to battle, or Shirley before a swim meet. You just don't see Lelouch interact with Colin and Shirley in the same way as C2. One final note I want to mention. When C2 leaves Lelouch, he gets very emotional, and you see the attachment he has for her. I thought it was just because he needs her to defeat Britannia, but I don't think that's the case. Lelouch told Colin in stage 13, that she can leave the Black Knights, knowing full well that she is his best pilot and will follow her the Black Knights may not be able to defeat Britannia. If you look at all the major battles in Kogias, Colin is the one that turns the tide for the Black Knights. The point is, Lelouch needs Colin, but was willing to let her go. Lelouch was also willing to erase Shirley's memories of him to protect her, and in a way that was also letting her go. But he was never able to let C2 go. When C2 went to go join Mao, Lelouch told her to not go. He even tried to use his Gias on her, despite C2 telling him previously that Gias doesn't work on her. When Charles tried to take her code, Lelouch tells Charles that he cannot take her from him. She's very important to him. Lelouch can't go on without C2. He needs her, not just to help him with his plans, but emotional support, to have deep conversations, 
and have someone he can care for as well. Lelouch always worries about C2 and takes care of her, even when she lost her memory and was no longer the C2 he knew. It's truly something to see these two develop within Kogias. Now you probably already know who I think Lelouch loves, but in all fairness, let's discuss why Lelouch may not be in love with C2. It's possible that Lelouch only cared for C2 because he needs her help. Lelouch has also expressed his anger towards C2 with the Gias contracts that she gives out. He even called her a monster. Beyond that, even if everything I just mentioned before is in fact true, it doesn't mean that Lelouch loves her as a romantic partner. It could be on the same level as a sibling or a parent. Remember, Lelouch lost his mother at a young age and was forced to live in Japan with Jess Nunnally. Sure, he had to grow up fast, but you can see he does not have a parent-like figure in his life. You can easily interpret C2 as a mother figure for Lelouch or a mentor, someone who Lelouch can go to and learn from. C2 early on would insult Lelouch and challenge him, not in the way of a lover, but more of a mentor. And Lelouch would respond with trying to get better and to move on. So I can see this being the nature of their relationship, but as you can already figure out, with everything I've gone over, the winner for me is C2. Lelouch goes to C2 for help and advice, as well as emotional support. They both love to tease each other, and Lelouch almost declared his love for her towards the end of the series. Considering how little time the story spent on Shirley and Lelouch's relationship with her, I wish they just made her a minor character in the story. It's possible that if Shirley had more time to develop, and maybe the story focused more on her, maybe Lelouch would have had more time to declare his love. Because she's just so irrelevant to the story, it's hard for me to, to even like look at them as a possible couple, especially Lelouch loving her. And with Colin, Lelouch never saw her in that way. I kind of wish they made an OVA where Lelouch declared his love for each of the three girls, much like how Clannon did that in their OVAs. But from what we got, I think C2 is the one that Lelouch loved the most. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this one, please like and share this video. If you want more Kogia's content and do not want to wait for videos to come out, then please check out my blog. I upload new articles every week, usually on a Thursday, on given topics like Code Kiosk. I just finished an update to my anime streaming guide and will leave a link in the description box below. But now I ask you, who do you think Luge loved among C2, Shirley, and Colin? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.